We've implemented all of our say word, say sentence, ask user to spell and check result blocks. Now we need to create this whole block sequence. So let's dive into Python and get stuck into it. Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, and on this channel, I help curious learners just like you along on your learning journey. In this series, we've built a project in Scratch and we are translating it across to Python so we can take you from Scratch to Python. We're nearing the final stages of our game. We're up to the part where we're creating the spelling component in Python. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is create a new function and this function is going to be very similar to when the green flag is clicked. We're going to basically call this function to kick off our spelling game. Now I'm just going to magic some comments on the screen to give us a little bit of guidance and direction. Okay, so we need to read the lines to extract the words, and then we need to loop through each of those lines to say the word, say the sentence, spell the word, and we're gonna check the result. And right at the end, we wanna print the result of the game. So let's attack this first line here. We made a function in an earlier video to read the lines and extract the words and the sentences. Let's scroll up to it now. Okay, here is that function, read lines from file. So I'm just going to copy it. It takes a parameter of the file name, but if we don't supply it one, it's just gonna to default to this. So that's nice and neat. Now we need to check down what it is going to return. It returns a tuple of words and a tuple of sentences. So it's gonna create two tuples there for us inside one tuple, a nested tuple. Okay, we're just gonna keep that in mind. We're basically gonna do this multiple assignment here and we're going to do that down in the function that we just created. So let's scroll back down. Okay, let's paste the name of that function. Remember, we don't need to pass in anything to it because as we can see by our type hinting here, we've got the file name equal to lines.txt. I don't need to change that. Now let's do our multiple variable assignment. We're going to assign our words and sentences to the result of read lines from file. Now, if you're a little bit uncertain about this, let's just test that it's working. To do that, we can run our project here and in the console, let's just call the function start spelling and it's going to run the read lines from file and then we'll print the result of words to the console here. And there you go, you can see our words and you can also see here the sentences they just added in at that print statement. So that's working as we'd expect. Okay, let's just clear that and get rid of those prints. Okay, let's check out this next line where we're going to loop through each line. Well, we're actually just going to loop through each word in this list. And the way to do our looping is to use a for loop. But before we do that, I just want to revisit how we can access items in a list or a tuple uh, using some notation. So, You'll recall that I've got a hard-coded list up the top called lines just down here in the console. You can see if I type lines and hit enter, it just returns that list and just scroll to the top of this file if you're not sure what that is. Now, the way that we can access the individual items of this list, you can see here we've got string values. The way that we do that, I'll just clear the console so you can see what's going on, is we type in the variable name, so lines, and then we use that square bracket notation. And if I put an integer inside of that and we start at zero, that's gonna to refer to the first item in the lines list here. And there you go, it prints the first line. Should you try and make a dash for the car? I can change that index and we'll get the next item. If I put a negative one here for Python, that actually means we'll get the last item in that list, which is lunch. Sometimes Alex comes home for lunch and we eat together. So the key takeaway from this is we can supply an integer number or an index to reference a particular item in that list. And over here in Scratch, we've got a block that that replicates, okay? Or that translates to, and that's the item number of lines, okay? That's exactly what we're doing. We're just doing that using the square bracket notation. Can you see that? Can you see how we're just doing the same thing there? So then what we can do is we can find the length of lines and we know how to do that, don't we? Okay, we know how to find the length of lines. Remember, we can use the function len to do that. So if we get the function len, we're no longer focused on lines. We've got some words and sentences here. So let's get the length of the words here. All right, now this is just going to count the total number of words, which is 10. And what we want to do is create an iterator, okay? We're going to create some kind of counter variable that's going to count up from zero to nine. So it's going to cycle through each index in our words list. And the way that we do that is we need to wrap this len function, the length, in another function called range, okay? 
And the range function, what it does is it has a starting value and an ending value, and it creates all those values between them, okay? So I've sort of created our for statement a little bit backwards here. The way you would do it is, okay, for the local variable, and I'm gonna use the variable name i here just to stand for index. It's just common uh, programming practice. You'll know that we've done that in our Scratch project as well. We did an underscore i, and I'll just bring that up on the screen so you can see that. Okay, down here in our set column position, we've got the variable underscore i here, and you see how we're setting it to zero and we're iterating, we're changing it by one. And that's what this for loop does. It starts at zero and it counts all the way up to the maximum number, okay? So we go for that variable i in this range, okay? For i in this range, we're gonna do some business. And I just wanna show you what's going on here. Let's just print the value of i. All right, let's clear the console, run the program, we'll call start spelling, and what do you think you'll see here? Pause the video and have a guess. If you guessed all the integer values from zero to nine, you were right, okay? So we are just counting up from zero to nine. I encourage you to check out the documentation for range. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to go suss out if it's a little bit confusing for you. Okay, so now we have this variable i. We need to do something with it. Well, I propose what we should do is let's create a variable called word and let's grab the current word. That's what this is gonna do, okay? We're going to get the current word. And while we're at it, we may as well get the sentence too. So we're gonna get the current word and sentence from the two lists that we created from the read lines from file, okay? We can do that because we're iterating. So when i is equal to zero, we'll get the first word and the first sentence. When i is equal to one, we'll get the second and so on right up until the end. So that is how this for loop works. And just to demonstrate this in action again, I've got our two print statements. It's really good to do this just to test while you go along so you don't get coding too far ahead and you encounter bugs. So you can see here we've got dash and should you try to make a dash for the car, we've got some nice pairings going on without word and sentence. Okay, I'm just going to delete those two print statements. Okay, so we did all the hard work in previous videos where we implemented say word. So all we need to do is call say word and pass in that word that we have just created here. That is why we created that parameter before. And after we say word, then we want to say a sentence. And what do we want to pass into sentence? You guessed it. We want to pass in the sentence. And then we want to ask the user to spell the word. Okay, let's scroll up and take a look at spell word. Okay, so here's the ask the user to spell the word. It takes a word and also returns the answer. So what we want to do is store this answer in a local variable in the start spelling function. So let's go back down to it. Okay, so we need to create a local variable here called answer. And we're going to store whatever input we get from the user because then we're going to check the result. And when we check the result, you can see here that we need the answer as the first parameter and we also need the word. We need to compare the word and the answer together. Let's just scroll up to check result. So you can see here, we get the answer and we get the word, we compare them, and then we return what the result is. The result is either a zero or one. Now this is handy because we can actually keep score with this. So let's jump back down. In order for us to keep score, we need to have a score variable. And you know what? I think we should store all the scores in a list here. And so what we can do is add the result to our score list here. And that's the same thing as just adding a thing to the list here in Scratch. I don't think I went over that in previous videos, but yeah, when we use that uh, append for a list, we're just adding a thing to the list. So here we're going to go score.append and that append function just adds the thing inside of this. The thing is the result here, okay? So we're counting the score doing that. And then we want to print the result of the game. The way to do that is just to do it inside of a print function here. Just follow along with me on this. I'm not going to explain it. Just put an F, we're gonna go double quotes here. We're gonna start typing U spelt because this is a string. And I'm gonna put a space and put some curly braces in and then we're going to call a function called sum. And we're going to sum the score. And what this is gonna do is take all the one values inside of our score list and just add them all together. So that's a really neat function there. And I'm just going to put a forward slash. Might even give it a space. Space after that, we're gonna go more curly braces. And then we're going to call len of words because we wanna find what the total number of words were. So we're gonna take uh, the score that we got out of the words in that list. And that's how we can print the result. 
These curly braces allow us to put some dynamic values in there, such as calculating the score or putting in the length of the words. There's a few other ways to do this. I'll put a link down in the description for you to go and check out. Okay, we've just about got a game here, albeit in its rudimentary form. Let's run the program here. And to get things rolling, what we need to do is call start spelling. When we call start spelling, we're going to read the lines in the file and we're gonna start iterating over the words in that list. So here we go. Dash is our first word. Here's our sentence. Should you try and make a dash for the car? And spell the word you heard. Well, we haven't heard it yet, but this is the prompt for us to spell that word. Correct. Great. We get that feedback. Next word is bath. Take a nice warm bath and relax for a while. Now, you'll notice a bit of a problem here because we can just look at the word that's on the screen. So we need to also clear the console to be able to do that. Let's just scroll up above the start spelling function here and create a new function. And we're going to call it clear console. We're not gonna pass it anything. I'm not going to explain this function in great detail because I Googled it myself. We are going to call OS here. So I need to import a module just in a second uh, called system. We're gonna call the function at system. And inside of here, we're going to return the value CLS if the os.name is equal to nt, else we're going to clear. And you can see we've got a little red squiggly line under that. We need to scroll to the top, do that now. And now we need to import os for operating system. Now let's scroll back down. And you can see our red squiggly line has gone. So now all we need to do is call clear console. We don't have to write this gnarly long line all the time. And when do we need to do that? Well, we probably wanna clear the console after we've said the sentence. So let's scroll up to check sentence or say sentence here. And here we've got sleep. So probably the best time to do it is just before we ask the user to spell the word. So let's do it then. Let's clear the console when we ask the user to spell the word. Let's run the program and then we can call start spelling. There we get, we have dash. Should you try and make a dash for the car? And look, it clears it, so that's great. We can put in the word dash and correct. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and play this game until we get the result down in the bottom here. So I will magic all of that. Okay, I'm here on the last word lunch and I'm going to type that in. Boom, correct, and you spelled 10 out of 10. I also noticed a slight little bug as well. I wouldn't call it a bug, but as soon as we get the result, we check the result, it says the word too quickly. So I think that we should probably add a sleep in here as well to check result just get a little bit of feedback on the screen. Let's just sleep for a second. Okay, and that's pretty much our spelling game. All that's left for us to do is to add in the text-to-speech engine. We can't actually run that program here in Replit, which is why we've left it to the end, but we're gonna code it in here first, and then I'm gonna show you how to run it on your local machine, because you'll need to install Python locally. So we've got two more videos left in this series. You've done an incredible job if you've come all this way you've really started to understand some core concepts of Python. So keep at it, you're nearly there. We've got a couple of videos left. I can't wait to round up this series with you, but until next time, I'm off to go find a wave and I'll catch you in the next one.